Good morning, children of God and children of Timberlake. My name is Miss Erin. I'm the children's ministry director here at Timberlake, and I'm so glad that you guys have joined me this morning. Boys and girls, we are learning a memory verse. Uh, our memory verse is uh, Psalms 86, and it is verse 11. And so Pastor Brad challenged us of everyone, not just us, but also your mom, your dad, your grandmothers and grandfathers to learn this memory verse. So we are going to work together, but we use hand motions because that helps us remember it a little bit easier. So boys and girls, the first part is uh, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may relay, rely on your faithfulness. And so this is the hand motions that we've been doing. We've been doing teach. So like you're going to put it a hat on your head, but instead you're going to share it with someone. So teach, you're sharing something in your mind. Teach me your way, Lord. We make a big L, put it on our shoulders. We go across our chest to our hip. So teach me your way, way, Lord, that I may rely. So when you take your two index fingers and you spin them in a circle. That's rely. All right. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your. And then faithfulness is where you make a little okay sign and another okay sign. And you put your one okay sign right here and you bring it to your head and you go faithfulness. Faithfulness. So let's put it all together. Teach me your way, Lord that I may rely on your faithfulness. Good job. All right, so boys and girls, I have some images to share with you this morning. So let me go ahead and pull them up on my screen. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. Here we go. All right, so right there, we have maybe some items in this picture that you may have at home. So this right here, what, do you, what are my boys and girls seeing? See some paws here, we see a bowl it's full of maybe kibbles and bits and bits, I don't know what this is called, but it's dog food, right? There's his little doggy paw, so this is a dog bowl. All right, and then down here, we see a collar and we see a leash. Do you have one of these at home for your dog? All right, maybe you have one of these at home. Look at all those silly dog toys there. And maybe, you, maybe your dog prefers a ball. Uh, my dog really enjoys scrunchies. We bought a bunch of scrunchies and he doesn't eat them, but he carries them all over the house. And thanks to my daughter discovering this, we have our house never looks clean because there's just scrunchies laying everywhere in our house. Um, but if you have pets at home, you know that it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort and money to care for a dog, exam, for example. So you need the food. Uh, you need to water them daily. You need to give them exercise. Um, they also need protection. You can't just walk out the front door and expect your dog to walk beside you down the street. Some of our dogs need to have a leash to keep them close, to keep them out of danger. And we also use like fences and kennels for the same reason, to protect our beloved pets, right? To keep them from stumbling into harm. Just as our pets, and just as pets, sheep need to be guided. We need a guide. Jesus wants to be our good shepherd. We can trust him to lead us, lead us through the way. We can trust him to provide for us. We can trust him because we know that he has already given his life to save us from sin. So Jesus is really the good shepherd and he loved his flock enough to die for us. So we can trust him with everything. So today's Bible uh, verses are going to be in John 10, and this is a story of sheep, right? And if we jump all the way down to verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. What? Yep, this is another I am statements from Jesus. Remember, he said that I am, I am. He said, I am the light. He said, I am the, the bread. He said that I am the, the life. And now he's saying, I am the shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. 
who gives his life for his sheep. Hired workers do not like the shepherd. They do not own the sheep. And when they see a wolf coming, they run off and leave the sheep. Then the wolf attacks and scatters the whole flock. Hired workers run away because they don't care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me, I know the father and I give up my life for my sheep. I have other sheep that are not in this sheep pen and I must bring them together too. When they hear my voice, then there will be one flock of sheep and one shepherd. The father loves me because I gave up my life so that I may receive it back again. No one takes my life from me. I give it up willingly. I have the power to give it up and the power to receive it again, just as my father commanded me so. Now, what the disciples and the people didn't realize was he was saying, he was basically saying that he was going to give up his life for us. And he hadn't done it yet. This is before the resurrection, okay? So he is saying that he is going to give up his life, that his father is gonna ask him to give up his life for us, his sheep. And he loves us so much that he does that willingly. And I just think that's beautiful. You know, the more you read the Bible, the more you realize that Jesus had this plan all along. And so I'm just so excited and encouraged by this reading. Now, the sheep's gate may not care. <clears throat> the sheep gate or the hired help might not care enough about the sheep to protect it, but the shepherd does. His job is to provide for the sheep, to lead them and to keep them safe. Sheep need a lot of leadership and care. Shepherds are trained not only to protect the sheep, but to, but to defend them from danger. So sheep need a shepherd who loves them enough that they would die for them. And Jesus knew that one danger that we face more than anything is our own sin. The Bible tells us that punishment for sin is death. And it tells us that no amount of good deeds can save us from that. That's why Jesus laid his life for us. Like the good shepherd who will fight off dangerous predators, Jesus put himself in harm's way. Jesus died and saved us from sin like the caring shepherd might die for his flock from a, from a wolf. So we can trust him. We can trust him to lead us and to guide us because we know that he loved us enough to die for us. You know, perhaps there is no other passage in the Bible that captures what it means to be a good shepherd than Psalms 23. So we're gonna read that together again. Some of you might have heard this a couple of times, but I want you to put that in the light of the fact that like Jesus said that he is the good shepherd. And we understand now that shepherds protect and love the sheep and will do anything for the sheep. So with that in, in mind, let's read this Psalms 23 together. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I will never be in need. He let me rest in fields of green grass. He leads me to streams of peaceful waters and you refresh my life. You are true to your name. You lead me along the right paths. I may walk through the valley of dark. I may walk through the valley of dark as death, but I will not be afraid. You are with me and your shepherd's rod makes me feel safe. You treat me to a feast while my enemies watch. You honor me as your guest. You fill my cup until it overflows. Your kindness and love will always be with me. Each day of my life, I will live forever in your house, Lord. And this translation does not flow out of Miss Erin easily. This right here is uh, the children's illustrated version, the common English version. Miss Erin has memorized uh, other versions, so <laughs> forgive me, I'm stepping over on my toes, but I think it brings it down a little bit to your level to understand what the shepherd is actually saying here, what he's willing to do for his sheep, that he guides them through still water, that literally as the enemies are watching, like the foxes and the wolves, he prepares a meal for the sheep. He will not let us worry about that. 
and then he fills our cup till it overflows. Have you ever heard the, the word overflow? Uh, Miss Erin uses it a lot because it's a beautiful illustration. Have you ever had someone pour you a really great glass of lemonade and you're like, more please, more please, this is an overflow. I mean, it's making a mess. It's all over the counter and that is good, right? Have you ever, have you ever asked for a scoop of ice cream and someone give you like two scoops? You know what I'm talking about, right? That is the overflow. So a good shepherd does many things for his flocks. First and foremost, he provides for them. He gives them a safe plus safe place for rest. He makes sure that they are well fed. And we've already seen that Jesus is the bread of life, the bread that gives us strength. Our good shepherd provides that strength and rest that we need to get through each and every day. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, right? The good shepherd also protects his flocks. Even in the dark times, when we are walking through dangers, we can rely on the good shepherd to keep us safe. So that's like that saying that Miss Aaron might say that even when I don't see you, even when I don't feel you, you were working on behalf of me. Now we've heard Jesus say that he is the light of the world. Who better to guide us through the valley of darkness than the light of the world, right? The shepherd is also willing to defend his sheep to death. Jesus died on the cross and paid for our sins of the world. He paid for every sin that you will ever commit, every sin that I will ever commit. What greater thing could he have done to show us that he is for us? A place called heaven where we are invited to receive this eternal life. He is the gate the, through which we can enter into that home. We just need to choose to follow his voice. We will live with him forever and ever. And Jesus is the good shepherd. He provides, he protects, he died to save us. And we can trust him to lead us and to give us strength every single day and in eternity. So let's ask some yes and no questions, okay? I don't have my sidekick with me today, so I'm gonna rely on you to answer these. Here we go. So answer these questions about something good that the shepherd would do for his flock. So one more time, answer if these are things that are something good a shepherd would do for his flock. Okay, guide them to good grazing pastures. Guide them through pastures filled with green grass. Does a shepherd do that? Yes, good job. Okay, the next one. Signs them up for an insurance policy, yes or no? No, no, he does that. We are not guaranteed not to suffer or not to experience pain. We're just not. But he promises to go with us every step of the way. He never leaves us. Okay, protects them from danger. Yes or no? Yes, he says that he protects them for danger. So what the devil might mean for bad and hurt God reminds us that he is working all this out for our good. He redeems everything that happens. Everything messy that happens in the world, he brings into blessings. We might not see it right away, and it might take some time, but he protects us from danger because the ultimate goal is to have that eternal relationship with him forever and ever. So he's not going to risk that. Okay, next one. Runs to the shepherd. Would he run at the first sight of a wolf? pretty much answered that already, right? No, he is not gonna run from anything. He put his life down for us, for our sin. So he's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, feed them chocolate bars for being good sheep. Yes or no? No, no. We're not guaranteed all the blessings. There are gonna be people in the world who are gonna get far more than you and you are going to receive more blessings maybe than some people. And so that keeps us humble and that reminds us that he provides us with everything that we need but it might not be everything we want when we want it, right? Nope, no protection in that. And we don't get things for good deeds, right? Because we're always going to do something wrong. We have sinful hearts. So uh, thank God for God's righteousness to be able to bring us back to him over and over again. All right. And then the last question, die for his sheep. Yes. He literally gave us the greatest example of sacrifice. He died for us. 
So a shepherd would die for his sheep. So what is the Bible truth in all of this? Who is the redeemer? The only redeemer is Lord Jesus Christ. So let's open our hearts in prayer and we are going to listen to a little worship song. Here we go. you to remember a couple of things. You are a child of God. I want you to remember that you're, you are loved by your parents, by your teachers, by your family members and your friends. You are loved by your pastors here at Timberlake, by Pastor Brad and Pastor Matt. You are loved by Miss Erin and you're loved by the whole children's ministry team. But most importantly, you are loved by God. So remember, he is with you everywhere you go. Jesus is the great shepherd and he is with you. He is guiding you. He is protecting you and he would do anything for you because he died for you. So let us put, let us put our hands together and we will close in prayer together. Okay. Dear God, thank you so much uh, for sending your son. Lord, thank you that Jesus Christ would die for our sins. And Lord, help us remember that you are, um, that 
Lord Jesus, you are the great provider, that you are the great shepherd. And so, Lord, I would pray that we would take it upon ourselves, that we would learn Psalms 23, that we would repeat that whenever we feel like we are in danger, and to remind us that you are never far from, um, from us, that you um, protect us, and that you love us, and that you would do anything for us. So, Lord, thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, I love you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.